Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. To all of my returning subscribers, hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any post. Everyone kick your feet up, relax, as I give a recap of the entire episode of Insecure, season four, episode seven, entitled Low Key Trippin'. I do a recap with photos offset to the side, and I have my thoughts and reviews at the end with the discussion. Let's get started. We pick up right where episode seven left off. Molly is at the restaurant. She's sitting there and she's ordering a very indecisive choice. And she sees Issa approaching the door and thinks out loud to herself, oh, here we go. And she places her back to the door as if she didn't see Issa. But then we see Issa turn back around and head back to her car. But Molly sees it as well. And she seems insulted that Issa didn't come and talk to her. And it's all in her body language that she's upset about that. We then see Andrew is talking to someone on the phone in his native tongue saying, Hey dude, we don't need to talk each and every day. We need to limit how many messages are going back and forth. It's not that serious. And by the way, we are not waking up at 5 a.m. It's very evident that when Molly enters the apartment that she's upset about something and Andrew quickly gets off of the phone and says hey we'll see you in Mexico. He ends the call and he goes to Molly and Molly starts to vent saying how do you know who I saw at dinner? I saw Issa and she didn't even say anything to me and she ran away. Can you believe that? Can you believe that she's behaving that way? And Andrew gives a no, kind of like, let me just agree with my girl so she can just move on from that. And he starts to observe what she's packing and jokes around with her and saying, hey, you know, you're packing nothing but bikinis and swimsuits. You're eventually going to have to pack some pants. And Molly reconfirms that, hey, I plan on being bottomless the entire time. As they're speaking, Molly receives a message and she's bummed. She's like, ah, really? She lets Andrew know that I have a business meeting, a quick business meeting before the flight. And Andrew says, you know what? Maybe you just need to just go ahead and handle that and try to remain calm. Just try to chill. When Molly gets to the office the next morning, she questions her assistant, Karen, about, hey, why didn't I get a better heads up about this last minute meeting from Malcolm? And the assistant apologizes and she says, hey, you know, the case and everything that's going on, I'm sorry. I should have you, gave you a better heads up. And Molly's like, well, yeah, because when you're incompetent and you don't let me know stuff as soon as possible, it makes me look bad. And I don't pay you for you to make me look bad. That's not what I need. And the assistant apologizes and she says, I'm sorry, it won't happen again. Molly barely makes her flight with Andrew and she apologizes because her meeting went over and her driver was just super talkative. But to calm her nerves and everything that just happened, he orders champagne, whiskey, a blanket, and organic cheese puffs. They're then interrupted by this annoying passenger played by the amazing Kim Fields. And she says, hey, um, you guys going to Mexico? And Molly does this awkward look around like, uh, yeah, we're all going to Mexico. And she continues on and says, hey, I once got on the wrong flight and I also got into the wrong marriage for 23 years. But you know what? I'm reclaiming those years and those days. I'm getting every single day back. And I'm on day number three. And she breaks down and takes off. And Andrew is like, is she going to be okay? And Molly's like, well, I, I don't know. But I hope she doesn't talk the whole trip. Andrew says, bump that. Let's just toast and cheers to our first vacation together. And Molly says, you know, I know your brother has all this stuff planned. But when we get there, can we just like chill? Because then I really just want to rest when I get there. And Andrew confirms that, look, my brother may come off a certain way. But it's just his way of kind of making everybody feel like they're taken care of. And Molly says, yeah, you know, you're right. I'll try to tough it out. And I don't want to make it seem like I'm the girlfriend that's visiting and wants to show up and change everybody's plans. And he's like, look, let's just calm down and let's chill. And I'm excited to see what we both packed for each other. And Molly says, yeah, I've packed something very special. And uh I can't wait for you to see what it is when we get there. Andrew gets so anxious that he's excited to see what little sex fun she's packed in that suitcase. And he's so excited that he gives her a little something, something underneath that blanket while they're uh, on their way to Mexico. 
they arrive in Mexico and they meet up with the brother and the sister-in-law named Lydia. And the brother makes jokes about how he's finally cut his hair and he doesn't look a certain way. And they have so many things planned for the evening. And wow, I have an evening of a massage, watching the sunset and even dinner. And Andrew insists that they'll do whatever they can because, of course, they're tired from the long flight. But the brother says, you know, to play devil's advocate, I mean, how many times do we come up on a vacation like this and get in a massage and guacamole? And Andrew's just like, you know, we're in Mexico, so I'm pretty sure that we'll have another opportunity to get guacamole. So, And his brother says, you know, go to your hotel room, get your rest, and we'll see you in. And Andrew's like, maybe the next hour or not at all. So it's pretty evident that Andrew's brother is probably a wee bit controlling. They get back to the hotel room and they're unpacking and Molly can't wait to show what she brought. And she's popping out massage oil and Andrew's like, okay, that's good. What else you got? She pops out some lingerie. And after she pops out everything on the bed, Andrew has this silence like, oh, that's it? And she's like, oh, I mean, did what did you bring? And he proceeds to pull out. He's like, well, you know, I just, you know, got... A few plugs and uh, beads and um and ain't, ain't no plug in a in a vibrator and he was like well maybe i went overboard with everything and molly looks really 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 uncomfortable but he tells her look okay okay i'm sorry maybe i overdid it but it's all right we don't have to do all of those things i was just trying to bring stuff that was exciting and maybe you would like it and if you don't that's fine it's okay tell me what you do like And Molly is just so pleased that he's just being so compassionate and saying, hey, I care about your feelings and what you want. She says, well, I I really like what we did on the plane earlier. I mean, it was the excitement of, man, maybe we could get caught. And she tells him, well, how about we have sex on the balcony? And Andrew has no problem with giving her the D on the balcony outside looking at the beach. It's the next morning and Molly is saying, man, you know, I really got to tough this out. We're about to go on a hike. And they see his brother and (laughs) his wife ready to take this hike, this three mile hike in the morning. And they see Mabel and she's like, hey, everybody, you know, you remember me from the plane? Yeah, I'm just out here getting my hike on and getting my exercise, taking those day backs. You know what I'm saying? I'm busy, staying good. It's day number four. And she runs off. So they begin their hike and they enjoy the view and they're having a lot of fun. And Molly is saying, wow, that was really challenging, but it was worth it because look at this view. But wait a minute, how are we getting to the bottom? And she learns that the only way to get down to the bottom is to zip line all the way at the bottom. And she is just so liberated and happy and having so much fun and hugging Andrew and saying, I did it, I did it. And you just see the joy on her face. Later on that night, they're dancing, they're having fun, having dinner and drinks. And she is just in bliss. And you can finally see a true smile on Molly's face. They get back to the room and he's like, dang, you know, Nathan called me like three times. Let me see what's going on. So he gives him a FaceTime call and he's like, look, man, Andrew, I'm so sorry, but I can't figure out how to work this thing. I need help with opening the garage. And Andrew helps him. And then all of a sudden we hear Issa's voice saying, hey, is that Skippy? And you see this disappointment of Molly like, that's Issa there? Why is she there? Andrew ends the call after Nathan gets the help that he wants. And Molly says, wow, you know, Issa's back with Nathan, huh? It's kind of like Groundhog Day. And Andrew says, you know, I don't think it's that serious or a big deal. I think they're just hanging out. And Andrew says, you know, Nate was dealing with some stuff. And Molly says, you know, he really showed his true character the way he did Molly. And Andrew's like, no, no, no. I mean, he was really dealing with, like, mental health stuff. And Molly's like, well, dang, does Issa know? And Andrew's like, look, I don't know. That's between them. And Issa's not here. Stop talking about her. We need to enjoy this trip. And Molly agrees that, right, you're not, they're not here. I just need to focus on us. They hug and they indulge in some good sex and they just try to have a good night. Miss Molly even takes it a step further, puts on some sexy lingerie, ties up Mr. Andrew, blindfolds him, and tells him that he gonna eat that booty out tonight. 
So you got Lydia, Andrew, and Molly. They're at the pool just talking. And she's expressing that, you know, your brother tried to invite your sister too. But, you know, she was busy and she had all the stuff she was trying to do. And while she's explaining that, somebody that's swimming splashes some water in her eyes. She's like, oh, dang it. And Molly's like, oh, girl, I know that burns. Let me go run and get you a towel real quick. I'll be right back. She then goes to the counter. And while she's in line, it's two white people that are in front of her. And they get their towels and they just walk off. But when Molly Molly gets to the front of the line, the hotel employee says, well, I need to see your hotel key in order for you to get a towel. And she's like, well, I don't have it with me. Can I just get the towel? She's like, no, it's policy that I got to get, you know, I got to see it in order for you to get a towel. She's like, well, I don't understand the people in front of me. You didn't ask them that. So why am I giving you my key? I just don't understand. She's like, look, it's hotel policy. I'm sorry. I don't know what you think I'm insinuating, but I need to see this and you need to show me your key. And as she's doing that, Molly gets really insulted. Like, am I losing my mind? Why is she just asking me for a key? I don't get it. Andrew's brother sees what's going on and he just pops up and says, oh, hey, you know, this is our room key. You know, here you go. And, you know, just give her a towel. She's a resident here. And the employee proceeds to go even further and hand the towel to him instead of directing it towards her. And Molly is so teed off that she just snatches that towel. Like, give me that towel. She's had enough. When Molly returns to the pool, you could just see steam dang near coming out of her ears. And Andrew can see it. And he grabs her arm and she's like, you know, hey, are you all right? Is everything okay? She tells him, no, it's just the same old mess that just happened. I just can't believe what happened. And when his brother gets to the pool, he's like, yeah, you know, some employee when it wanted to see the key. And she's like, yeah, she was, you know, asking me for the key and didn't ask everybody else. Like, you saw it, right? And her brother's like, yeah, I saw it. And he's like, well, you know, playing devil's advocate, let's just say that, you know, the employee was just doing their job and really needed to see the key. And maybe you're just taking it a little too far and it's not that serious. Molly was like, what? I mean, you saw what happened. I mean, she asked me for the key, but didn't ask anybody else for the key. It's like, I understand that. And she's like, no, 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 no. This was clearly something racist. It wasn't just, you know, without a doubt, and you guessing and giving somebody the benefit of the doubt. He's like, okay, look, you act like you're the only one that deals with racism. I, I deal with racism too, but I just don't give energy to it. And, you know, I just choose to get angry over what I need to get angry for. And then the sister, you know, she's just like, look, look, y'all, this is what white people want. They want us to get upset with each other and, and argue and fight. And Molly's not trying to hear it. And she's like, you know what? You're trying to act like this is not a big deal when it really is. And her going back and forth. And Andrew's like, hey, you know, telling his brother, let's just stop. You know, you're, you're, you're adding fuel to the flame. And the brother's just like, no, 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 no. This is a good conversation. We need to talk about this. And Andrew's like, you know, don't don't be a, you know, jerk. You know, just, just stop it. Let it go. And Molly is so upset. She says, you know what? You only deal or or you act like you're cool with, co with people of color um, only if it benefits you. And that insults Lydia. And she's like, whoa, 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 that's just not true. And Andrew's just like, well, Molly, what do you mean? And Molly says, well, you know, you're you're different. And Andrew's just like, well, how? She's so upset, she starts to walk away. And the brother's asking, Molly, why are you leaving? And Molly drops an F-bomb and says, you know what? F you and F this whole situation. And Andrew, get your brother. And she just, she's had enough. There's so much confused friction when they return to the room. So much so they're not talking, they're not holding each other, there's no intimacy. The entire night is completely quiet and they are just laying in just complete silence. The next morning, Molly wakes up and Andrew's not in the bed. And we see that the time is 10 a.m. So she slept a very long time. And Andrew walks through the door and he's like, hey, I just let you sleep. I know that you probably needed it. I know that you talked about how you were tired. He hands her a morning smoothie. And he says, you know, how about we just go to the sauna today? And Molly says, well, are we going to meet up with your brother and Lydia? I mean, I, I don't want to ruin this trip. And I just, he's like, no, 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 no. My brother was a jerk for kind of not being sensitive and kind of empathetic to what you were going through. And just, no, it'd just be you and I. And he's an adult. He'll understand and he'll get over it and we'll talk about it later. But, you know, let's try to enjoy our trip. And they enjoy their morning smoothie. 
as Molly takes a nice walk by herself along the beach, she looks into the sun and looks into the nice view and she calls Dr. Rhonda. And she leaves a voicemail saying, hey, um, Dr. Rhonda, I, I know it's been a while, but I'm having trouble with letting things go lately. And I will, you know, I guess we'll talk about it later, but I really need to schedule an appointment ASAP. Um, I guess I'll see you then. Bye. And she's controlling tears and holding them back in some way. Andrew and Molly, when they get back to the States, they see Mabel. She's kissing down this one guy, and she looks really, really happy, and she had a really good time in Mexico, apparently. And they give her a hand clap like, wow, she's really serious about reclaiming who she is and starting over. They get their luggage, and they're about to go, and Molly sees Lawrence and says, hey, Lawrence, what's up, man? And Lawrence says, hey, Molly, what's up? Where y'all coming from? And she lets them know that they're coming back from Mexico. And she's like, but where, where are you coming from? He's like, oh, Frisco. And she's like, oh, Frisco. Totally awesome, dude. He's like, what? She's like, you know, full house. And it was a joke. They didn't go over too well. And he's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But Molly's like, yeah, but anyway, you know, this is my boyfriend, Andrew. Andrew, this is Lawrence. He's like, yeah, well, you know, it's good to see y'all. Hope you had a good trip. You know, I'll talk to you later. And they take off. And as Lawrence is leaving the airport, He's talking to some of someone over the phone and says, hey, um, I miss you. I've been thinking about you. Are you free to grab a drink soon? And that is the end of the episode. Woo, so let's just get right into one of the main discussions and topics between Andrew's brother and Molly. Okay, but let's just first say, well, what we saw from the snippet that we saw we didn't hear if the employee asked the white couple before her for a card. That's true. We can assume that she did or she did not, right? Molly's experience was her experience. She was under the impression that that employee probably did or didn't ask the people in front of her. So she was insulted by that, which is okay because that was her experience that was what she saw and her perception perception of what she saw right so here's the conflict andrew's brother wasn't being empathetic or sympathetic to her experience i want to see it from both sides okay there is truth to what Andrew's brother was saying, but dot, dot, dot. He is 100% correct. When you have the power to choose how you're going to react with certain situations that completely can mess up your day, make you mad, etc. What makes the situation harsh when he says it is that he's saying it with an undertone that isn't caring or understanding. He mentions that, yes, I've experienced racism, but I do this. He's not empathetic in saying that that's you. You have learned over a period of time how to deal with it. It was this thing like, well, you experience that and get over it. That is where the wrong is on his end. If you know racism and you understand it, that was a time, my friend, to be understanding. And Molly experienced through her eyes what she's experienced for being black in the world we live in. So in that moment, she couldn't just say, well, yeah, let me just nah, think about it later and just sweep it under the rug right? That thing and those actions take time. So it was very, very much like a jerk the way that he responded, Molly lashing out and saying certain things that were offensive to them as well. I really, really do like that dynamic of the discussion, but what makes him kind of harsh and wrong in that situation is that he didn't take the time to come down to that level of understanding and knowing that feeling of what somebody doing a racist thing to you feels like. Um, I really like that Lydia, Lydia tried to diffuse the situation and just say, hey guys, this is what white people want. Let's just talk about it. And I, I, I do like that she tried to diffuse it. I do like that even though that was her husband, she wasn't backing her husband up. 
because she probably knew that, hey, my hubby is not right in this situation. I mean, it's, you have your feelings and he I think he has some truth to that. But it's the way that you approach somebody else in their experience and what they're going through, which was wrong. And the wife didn't say, hey, you don't talk to my husband like that. She didn't do that. She saw it in that moment from both sides and understanding both sides. Andrew. Ooh, I know some people are not going to agree with me, but for some strange reason, Andrew, I think something's up with Andrew, right? You're saying, okay, now, Bunny, you done lost your mind. This man is caring, endearing, understands Molly, is doing this, doing that. But I really think it's something up with Andrew. And I think he might be bisexual. Let me tell you why. Not because of the butt plugs, not because of the beads, not everybody that indulges in that is bisexual or gay. That's not what I'm saying. But there was this energy and this vibe between him and the male flight attendant. It's like they had their little moment in eye contact. Also, I think that Molly is maybe not meeting with him sexually it seems like he wants a little bit more in the situation does that make him bisexual no it does not but it's little things here and there that just kind of threw me off maybe i'm reading it wrong but something kind of just mm. when he was on the phone i'm like earlier okay he clearly he was talking to his brother in his native tongue and then switched back to english when molly entered the room but I'm like, who is he always texting and who is he always speaking to? And then when Molly enters the room, he puts his phone down. Maybe I'm reading it wrong. Feel free to check me and call me every name but my name in the comments. <laughs> Maybe I'm reading it wrong. I like Andrew and I hope I'm wrong and I hope I'm reading it wrong, y'all. Okay, because I love Andrew because everything that affects Molly, Andrew is so there for her all the time making adjustments listening to her not getting frustrated when she's expressing her feelings he always listens and he's very 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 patient with molly even everything that's been going on he diffuses a lot of situations okay molly's assistant karen do you think that she handled that situation okay from a boss perspective I don't think Molly was wrong in that situation. Her assistant did say that, I'm sorry, there's a case, there's a lot going on, there's this, there's that. But how many of us at our job, they could care less about what you're going through. Your job is your job, right? She could have been empathetic to the assistant. Oh my God, I understand. Um, there's something going on. You know, you didn't get the, the, the memo to me quick enough about the meeting at the last minute. I get that. But as a boss, and you say, hey, we can't make these kind of mistakes because if I miss the meeting, I'm going to look a certain way. Here's the issue with Molly from an understanding perspective. The real situation is with Malcolm. If you have undertone issues with Malcolm, it's not with your assistant. It's directly with Malcolm. If you feel that you're not getting information quickly and you feel like you're being kind of out of that bubble in office communication then that's something that you need to be bring with your team it's very obvious that your assistant is overwhelmed and there's a lot going on she looks new maybe um so maybe there's a might of this 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 lashing out it was a little harsh but maybe i'm used to being in the executive medical world so i didn't see that as such a bad thing she said it kind of harsh but you need to dish out the information to your boss as soon as possible. It was a little harsh, but I don't think it was something that, you know, she should be condemned for in the way that she reacted. Because, hey, I'm going on this trip. It was last minute and you didn't send it to me right when you got it. But, hey, what assistant is perfect? Nobody's perfect. Come on, Molly. Um, Molly's assumptions about Issa and Nathan. Let's just say Issa and Nathan was banging each other out. Every day since they saw each other from the block party, what does that have to do with you? Issa is a grown woman and she can do what she wants. She kind of seemed like she looked like she knew she had her foot in her mouth <laughs> when Andrew said, hey, he was really honestly dealing with some mental health issues and they kind of had their moment when they didn't talk. So maybe they're talking about it now, but that's not my business. That's that's them. 
She kind of had her mouth open like, dang. I didn't know what that was what was going on. Molly and Andrew's brother have a lot in common. They are control freaks. They like to control everything in their vicinity, in their lives, even not if it's their own. <laughs> so Molly's assumptions about Ethan, Issa and Nathan were just interesting. Her eyes were open when she found out that that was really something wrong with Nathan. And girl, maybe you need to chill out. Even forcing her to take a walk by herself on vacation and say, I really need to go back to my psychologist. I thought it was beautiful that she reached out to Dr. Rhonda again. Because if you remember from seasons one and two, the psychologist tried to tell her this a while ago she discussed her parents she discussed her friends and her career seasons ago but molly wasn't receptive to it in one in one ear and out the other and she wasn't consistent with the doctor enough to understand what she was learning isa it's very evident that she's moving on and she's trying to make sense of it in her life if she's with Nathan just kicking it, what's wrong with that? And her trying to find out some peace and what's going on with her. Let me know what you think. Um, let me know all of your thoughts in the comment. Am I reading Andrew wrong? Am I just tripping? <laughs> um, yeah, let me know what you think. I can't wait. Until next week, you guys, we only have so many episodes left. Check out those playlists and also indulge in other great movie and television show recaps. Also, stay tuned for June. We got Green Leaf, the final season five coming back. If you need to binge watch, make sure that you catch up on Green Leaf. I got all season four locked and loaded, ready to roll. Until next time, take care of yourself, be safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.